So do you guys remember where we left off? Of course. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> well, I know Stalworth doesn't because you missed the last session, so um, we'll have Mary give a recap. <laughs> He watched the video. He watched the video, didn't you, Stalwer? Uh, okay, what I meant was I know where we left off from the last <laughs> Good save. Good save, Stalwer. Good save. All right. Uh, so last week, we helped Harry Houdini escape and pissed off Nikolai. Um, so uh, what I uh, Yeah, so we got him. asked by another guy to kill Harry Houdini, and we didn't. Right, that's Nikolai who we pissed off. Um, so, William Shepard is investigating the fire tanker murders. Yeah. Um, Sullivan Dane has escaped from jail. And I have two Anarchs in my basement that I will blood bond to me. <laughs> All right. That sounds very interesting. We, we, we brought back the... We, we did return the possible Tremere to the Chantry. All right. Um, I'm expecting in this session to uh, have the uh, mind rape of the Tremere, because I'm sure we're all in trouble. All right. So, in the... Give me a second. Switch this over. All right. So, you were also working on trying to recover the footage oh, yes, from... Oh, yes, I was getting the footage off Jonathan's, Jonathan's cell phone. phone. Yep. All right. Give me an intelligence plus computers. All right. Uh, that is seven with a specialty. Okay. Yeah, it's fairly easy to get uh, the information off um, and then reassemble. Okay. So I have proof. Again. Yes, you do. Okay. Um, and once you, uh, as you're hanging out of the house, you do get a report back from your sire. Mm -hmm. um, it is very curt, oh, and, sure it, not and it instructs you that you were told to avoid any dealings with Nikolai, and that... I knew that's what she was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and that by engaging with him, you were only allowing him to manipulate you into doing... Um, whatever he wants. Um, I assume you've basically held nothing back from your sire. No, fine. All right, uh, good. Uh, she's going to know everything right. anyway. There's no <laughs> Okay, I'm just... Sometimes people like to do stupid things just no. because. No, I am well aware that she's going to come my rights. Um, she tells wow. you, she, in no uncertain terms, do not show the footage you recovered from the cell phone to anyone from the Tremere. Okay. Um, and avoid all further dealings with Nikolai. When he... Uh, what am I supposed to do when he traps me in an alley? <laughs> that is what I text back angrily. Do you actually want to do that? I need a strategy. I will say it more nicely. Um, <laughs> so what's the strategy when he traps me in an alley? Um, you should avoid situations in which that can occur. <laughs> How she's, very helpful. She's completely unhelpful. I'm <laughs> quite annoyed. She expects you to take a little bit of personal initiative. So who is Harry Houdini? Will she tell me that? Um, she says, oh yeah, in regards to that, he, uh, he is a rogue from the Tremere clan, and so trying to get you involved with him is just another level of Nikolai's duplicity. One of the reasons why, of course, she told you to just avoid him. So that's one reason why we should have killed Houdini. Yeah, you, that's technically a possibility. He is actually a rogue. Yeah. But is he? <laughs> I mean, I mean, your sire says so. Yes, if but we were in yeah. question as to like whether or not Houdini was actually fallen out with the Tremere, why don't you just ring your sire and find out? So yeah. I did. As to your, I did. As to your further relations with Houdini, she says you should just avoid him exactly the same as Nikolai. So uh, that at the beginning of the thing, as soon as Nikolai left, I said, I'm calling my sire. She did not return my call at that time. So we went through oh, the whole we Because the game master wouldn't let me just figure that out at the beginning. Sucks the crafty mod. Yeah. 
I don't suppose you consider that tonight. she might be in Europe where the time zones prohibit her from replying to you immediately. Not a good excuse. <laughs> That's about actually, as good of an excuse as just avoid Nikolai. Actually, the actual perfect explanation you. because... I'll tell you when she wants to give it to you, though. Then she should have had a ghoul answer the phone for me. So she's going to tell the ghoul all the secret information to give to you? And and the Tremere clan has not necessarily uh, put out a hit on Houdini, so had we killed him, it would have been us killing a Tremere that wasn't sanctioned. Oh, yeah, she's not telling you to kill him. She's telling you to avoid the whole yeah. situation. So, no, we should not have done what Nikolai wanted. Basically, Nikolai had trapped you in a situation where there was no way that you were going to get out without pissing someone off, which is... Right. And she said, Why and her she's... helpful advice to me was, I should have avoided that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you had avoided it, you wouldn't have been trapped in the situation. I just don't be sad. Course. I blame Ryan, because he's the one who went there to begin with. That's true. So. Hey, I was lost and alone and getting chased by Slenderman, alright? Yeah, you should have avoided Nikolai. <laughs> should have avoided, avoided Slenderman. Slenderman. <laughs> you should have avoided Slenderman. And you should have avoided being alone. To be perfect, I'm sure there's a way to become a vampire. True. Alright. So, uh, the rebuilding of Gary is currently underway. So, is this like the. When is this? How far? Um, this is basically right after the last one. Okay. Um, although you have been getting reports recently, um, at first it was just kind of a, you know, just sort of a smaller thing, but as you've been. Sort of laying low after your whole mess with Nikolai. You've been reading some of these reports from the rebuilding of the Jackson 5 Theater. Um, and apparently there have been a series of kind of bizarre workplace accidents there over the course of... People being staked? The construction. <laughs> <laughs> Not that, no. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just people are like getting injured, like stuff is breaking at weird times. Do we need to go like... Exercise the place? Is it haunted? Um, yeah, you're not really sure what could be up with it. The one supernatural thing you do know that was in residence there was that it was an Anarch base um, before the refurbishment started. Well, we should probably go clear that out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that is, um, going on. Furthermore, uh, LeBron and his gang have started to accumulate a um, fairly large amount of money. Um, well, with the drugs you gave them, the coke you liberated from Ryan. Um, however, uh, his group has become the target of a string of gang violence incidents. Mm. So it seems like they have been under attack recently as well. From the Anarch, oh, the Anarch group, probably. It is possible, yes. All right. All right. So, Jonathan. Yep. You're back at your own, well, not your own home, but the home that you were at before you were at Stephen's home. <laughs> right. Uh, so, you know, you've basically... Snuggling up with Alicia. You've gotten up. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, without my story. without Lucy there, um, she has basically stuck into her own room, and so you've been on your own in the master bedroom. Thank God. Very lonely, God. you know, longing for some contact with Alicia. No, no, we stopped that right with. now. Um. So yeah, you uh, you know, get up in the morning. You're doing your regular, basically, uh. Hygiene routine, you know, comb the hair, shave off the neck beard, and... I think uh, comb the hair is the end of it. Yeah. Well, in all seriousness, like, statistically, it's quite possible that any of us were embraced on a day we hadn't shaved for a while. No, stop and that. And we would have to shave every day, wouldn't we? Stop, stop that. <laughs> That is how it works. Uh, he has a natural appearance five. He has no beard of any kind. He's completely yeah. smooth shaven. Are, are you yeah, saying okay, that a man cool. cannot be ha handsome with a beard? I think so that's what if, anyone has, um, if anyone has a neck beard, it's me with appearance one. 
<laughs> and it's like that because I'm 15. It's like that shitty beard that like teenagers have. It patches. They it's they just can coming nice. in patches yeah. unevenly. Nice. Yeah, patches, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Probably shaves that now. These were your one. Uh, I'm sure Lucy makes them. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't before though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, you're just basically enjoying an evening shower before you get dressed, get ready to. You know, head out into the world again. And Alicia joins in. And um, please stop reading ahead in the script. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just assume she's a horny gal. But yeah, she does jump into the shower with you. You're just kind of like sitting there with your eyes closed, just sort of enjoying the warmth. Um, <sighs> when all of a sudden you feel arms around you. Take a fucking hint. <laughs> you say this? No. <laughs> I should, but I don't. He's scared because he thinks she might still have higher strength than he does, and she'll beat his ass. <laughs> Actually, that was, that, that, that's, that's fair. I don't think it. I know it. <laughs> Why not Jonathan be a bit more uh, rudely straightforward with this one? No, I'm not going to be rude. I'm a nice person. <laughs> he says ruefully. But I mean, you could just be cursed with her and be done with it. <sighs> and make an enemy of Modius? Yeah, you already have that done that anyway. I was going to say, you're already your enemy. The other thing to keep in mind is that, um, well, he's been kicked out of Stephen's house. And this isn't technically his house. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, there's the first two arguments on first. <laughs> I'm going to be nice to her like I am to everyone. Okay. okay yeah. So I will ask her politely, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, yeah. So she seems a little bit uh, surprised by the question. And uh, she just said, she was being obvious. What what uh, does it look like? It looks like you're turning the shower. Yeah, pretty much. If you knew that, why did you ask? It's very hard to be polite with this girl. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you just gonna have to break down and have sex with her. No, no, fuck just off. Share a little bit of love. No, no <laughs> fuck off. Okay, but why? <laughs> um. Take so. the hint. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, that stop bringing ahead in the script. <laughs> so she kind of looks at you. She's completely undressed at this point. Uh huh. I'd be surprised if she wasn't the fucking shower. And she just kind of looks at you quizzically and then says, "Are you gay?" Yes. It is very tempting to just say yes. Don't say yes. Oh my god. All your problems could be solved right now. Well, she's in love with some other Tory at all. <laughs> no, wait. She, she, she has all specs, doesn't she? She could just... Can you tell me I'm lying if she has all specs? Um, well... It's not a lie if you believe it, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> True. It's time for you to have sex with a man. Proof. <laughs> okay. It's not a lie if you believe it. Okay, I'll give Steven a call. <laughs> Um, she may have aspects. You don't know how much aspect she has. You don't know if she's using it right now to read your aura. Um, so yeah. I will tell her that I am bi. Mm -hmm. That doesn't solve anything. No, doesn't now, solve I know anything. it does, but that's the truth for Jonathan. That adds <laughs> actually a second oh, layer. Good Lord, Stephen does not want to get that call. Okay. <laughs> Alicia's like, can you come over? Yeah, can you come over? <laughs> Johnny and I need to spice it up. <laughs> no, fuck off. 
<laughs> like, like this he's character. just laying there in bed during the day, feels an arm around him, and then it's like, really, again, Alicia, and then he feels another arm around him, <laughs> and it's Stephen completely naked on the other side. And Stephen's old, too, so wrinkly. Oh, <laughs> uh. Alright. So, um, yeah, so she kind of looks at you and then sort of nods, and then she just kind of shrugs her shoulders, and she does continue to shower with you, but she doesn't attempt to, uh, you know, do anything else. Okay. Good. <laughs> All right. Oh, I hate this fucking character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a shame that you wrote into Jonathan's backstory that he wouldn't have sex with Alicia, but, you know, that's one flaw. Gonna have to get over it. I am simply not interested in this fucking character. <laughs> and you know damn well why. <laughs> well, originally it was just because of... Well, you know why originally it was. <laughs> but now it's because I just straight up can't fucking stand her. <laughs> yeah, on account of her not having a penis, I understand. It makes perfect sense. Fuck off. Yeah, just finds a Zemitsi. You can correct that. That's true. I mean, this is the ultimate well, online challenge. I know. We'll take Alicia, flesh crafter, to look exactly like Steven. Then you have the best of both worlds. <laughs> Uh, not in the timeline. She might be a good partner this time. I couldn't possibly care less with how fucking annoying she's been. <laughs> All right. Yes, forty women. They are annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Miles hates yeah. him <laughs> whenever a woman tries to have sex with him. He's <laughs> weird. Okay. <laughs> Stop trying to make this something about sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. I simply hate this character. That is all. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, Derek. Stalworth. Yes. All right. So you are uh, hanging out at the house when you receive a message on your social media, and it is from your parents in, I believe it was New York, you said that you originally lived? Ah, uh, yes, I believe so. All right. Anyway, so you get a message from them um, asking sort of how you've been, and they also mention that they are going to be visiting Chicago very soon uh, for the weekend. And so they want to make plans to um, basically meet up while they're in town. Uh, that could be awkward. So yeah, basically they're like, you know, A, they're asking if you can basically pick them up <clears throat> at the airport when their plane gets in. They're not going to stay with us. <laughs> um, they do have a hotel. Um, and they're also um, basically suggesting you guys, you know, go out to lunch Um Stuff like that. Uh, do I have eat food? Uh, no, you don't. And you can't be up during the day. Also, yeah, their plane is coming in at around like ten o'clock in the morning. Can I have someone pick them up for me? Um, yeah. I mean, very good. I suppose I could lend you use of my ghoul. I'm the you. strange man your son lives with. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Wait, what is, um, is Terry um, Stevens' relationship like employer, employee, or master, slave, or what? Well, we're sort of ex-lovers. Ex-lovers, I mm -hmm. see. So... But the blood bond is very much in play. Yeah. So it's a complicated relationship between Terry. So when does Terry betray us? What was that, dude? And when does Terry betray us? Uh, well, you don't know that yet. Never. Not yet, eh? <laughs> when he has uh, Derek's parents in his custody, I guess. 
That'll be the time. Fantastic. That'll be the time. That'll be the time. Um, so, yeah. So, Derek, if you would like to um, have Terry uh, pick your parents up and explain that you are uh, indisposed with very important work because of, I don't know, you now live with an old man in Gary. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That's cool me. Yeah, I'm not sure how you're going to And then I meet them for dinner um, after dusk. And then possibly. I will point out, though, it is like mid, like July ish at this point. So dusk is pretty late. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So um, you may have some splaining to do. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them something. All right. All right. Uh, Terry's going to be thrilled to be put in that situation. <laughs> I, I'm not your son, but I am uh, the white guy who will be your son's surrogate <laughs> for this trip. You know, he loved to. He loved He's to okay take, with he it. Love to take these, you know, this black couple around <laughs> and show them Gary. He would love to. Why not? Uh, they don't even know that he's in Gary. They still think he's in Chicago. Oh, well, because he's coming into O'Hare. Isn't they're they're coming into O'Hare? So yeah. he's going to have to travel into Chicago. Hmm. Oh well, that'll be fun. Um, oh, and they also ask you how things are going with Denise, the, uh... That'd be the girlfriend. <laughs> the girlfriend from a while ago. That you left That uh, woman who, like, died at some stage or something. Well, Denise ah, may her. be a ghoul somewhere. We don't know. Ah, uh, her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you're like, hey, got rid of her, not. got me an old maid. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you saying? Well, I was told, uh, I moved on. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm shacking up with the sugar daddy now. Out in Gary. <laughs> I, I close enough. <laughs> All right. I'm going to just listen to the full explanation before I set the difficulty of the role I'm going to ask for. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I'll tell them that I... I give you one second to think about this. <laughs> Alright, I will uh, move on. I'll do some stuff with Stephen and we'll come back to you while you consider this. Alright, cool. Um, let's see. Stephen or... Actually, we'll do something right. with Jonathan. Oh. Thing Your thing is really long. I'm like, right. well, that's going to be forever. Alright. So, uh... Blind Jonathan's big business really long. Oh, yeah, no, you're gonna die, like, really quick into it. You're gonna have to kill yourself eventually. <laughs> it's <very> true. <laughs> so, uh, Modius gets in contact with you. Um, this is a little way after the shower, like, Alicia gets out first. She leaves for a okay. while. And then a little while after that, you this get a phone happening. call from Modius. Not while you're in the shower. Good. All right, I will answer and I will greet him warmly. All right. Hello. He I says, be a for that. Hello, <laughs> young Jonathan. Um, I have need of you for a meeting uh, downtown, and he gives you address, an address in downtown Gary. Very well, then. What about? Uh, we'll discuss that once you arrive. Should I bring anything along? No, I don't think you'll need anything. Just come as quickly as possible. I'll be waiting for you there. Very well then. I will see you soon. All right. Then I put down the phone. Is Alicia, has she left? Am I alone here now? Um, yeah, you didn't notice right away. You were kind of busy with your writing. But yeah, it does seem like she's left the house. Crying. Okay, am I absolutely am I absolutely certain she's left the house? Um, you can't find her in any rooms unless there's like a secret panel in behind some wall. <laughs> right. Then I will cry out, "Fuck!" <laughs> and I will get. I love that he checks properly. every room in the house first. <laughs> yeah. He does have like five self control, so he's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just yeah, building. Does she? Yeah. She. <laughs> All right, so the so secret was... panel opens up and Alicia <laughs> steps out. <laughs> What's the matter, Jonathan? <laughs> so I will, I will find some nice clothes, get well dressed. Okay. 
And I will head down to the meeting look area. Like area. business attire or like date attire? Business attire. He right. is bi, we found That's out. true. <laughs> Modi Jonathan, I've He's heard missing. from my child. Yeah. Oh, we should no. <laughs> That'd be a <laughs> Modius and Alicia. Uh, huh. She's like, I hope you. I know it was awkward before, but now my father is here. Yeah. Rip us. I was gonna say you get to the meeting. Oh. You get to the meeting, and it's not just Modius. It's Modius and Alicia. <laughs> Do I got a bed with roses on? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then Stephen's also there, <laughs> and I was there. Two. <laughs> he comes up like that. Alicia and Modius are laying on the bed. Then Stephen just comes up behind and slaps him on the ass. <laughs> Giddy up, cowboy! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> that would be one one lucky woman with those three men. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh... <laughs> all right. So you arrive downtown. <laughs> Um, I don't know, yes. And you find that it seems to be like an office building. I will head inside. All right. So once you're inside, um, it is, there are multiple offices there, but one has been, it's currently like blank on the little card by the front door that tells you what all the offices are. But when you get there, uh, the door is open and Modius is inside. And it seems like people have just got finished basically moving things in, you know, renovating the place a little bit. And um, right. there is uh, basically a desk with, like, some chairs set up. And so Modius is sitting in one of them. He motions for you to take another. All right, then I do so. All right. Says young Jonathan. <clears throat> I've just been um, speaking with my child recently. Yes. Oh, I God. Think Oh god, it actually is the whole bye conversation. I don't suppose <laughs> she told you what this call was about. No, no she did not. Alright, well, I will enlighten you then. Much appreciated. You see, your sire and my own child have known each other for some time before your own embrace. Um, I imagine this much. As a result of their relationship with one another, uh, my child has come into possession of a boon owed to her by your sire. Oh, guess what? You get to pay back. We have had uh, a conversation about this, and we all believe it would be best for everyone <laughs> if Lucy. you did a service for me... And that would, of course, pay off your sire's debt to my child. Right. One moment out of character, please. <laughs> Fucking come on! I mean, right, you so could... so I am expected to... I am expected to work for Modius because my sire owes a boon to Modius' child. Yep. And of course, my sire won't owe me a bone for, bone for this, and Modius will not do so either. Obviously not. No. I despise every single one of these people. <laughs> Makes you feel better. Including... Alicia has also kind of got lost out, because her boon just got taken. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <sighs> right, in character again. Ah, I see. <laughs> So, um, self-control five, self-control five. <laughs> uh, we have been obviously rebuilding Gary and collecting finances from all the kindred of the city as well as some other uh, donors. However, we need someone to manage those financial transactions who is trustworthy, who knows about our kind and can keep everyone, you know, at a safe distance from the rebuilding process. I uh, fulfill one of those criteria. And I understand that you have uh, quite a flair with uh, financials. If there were a rating system. <laughs> yeah. If the You're theoretical human right maximum were five, you might have three. 
Well, I'm honored that you would think so, and I'm pleased to say that you're quite right. That is wonderful news. So I have already established this office for you. Uh, we're still putting the finishing touches on it, but it's ready, and all of the files and everything you'll need will be here. Um, and just looking around, you notice that it is, I mean, an office and everything. Um, when he refers to files, he does point to a filing cabinet, and you notice there's no computer or anything like that in the office. I can help you with that. Uh, <laughs> I could, I could buy a laptop if I had to. So might be good to have some sort of electronic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, he's got a ledger book on the desk. He basically does. <laughs> like he has set up this office with the way that someone would have in the 1800s, 50 years ago. Yeah. L.A. Noir. Basically, yeah. All right. There's a typewriter there. Um, <laughs> In case you need that. So he right. says, you know... I, I have my own, don't I? Yeah, you do. Uh, <laughs> so... We don't want to lug it down here. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I didn't bring it in, bring it, that's right. So he says, you know, this is... This office is, you know, at your disposal while the work continues. Um, uh, just in case I have uh, put in arrangements for it to be you know, the materials here for you to sunproof it in case that were to become necessary for some reason. Right. I can guarantee you it will. And, um... This is Jonathan I now, I, now have a, I now have an excuse not to go home, ever. He also gives you a sheet of paper, um, basically, with, uh... To like, sunproof it with. With the, uh, with the security, uh like, codes and everything for the building. It's fully secure because, obviously, there's kindred financial records here, so... It is actually a very secure place. Right. This actually worked out quite well. <laughs> yeah, actually, looking at the security procedures, this could be used as a haven if you needed to, although there, you would have to move in a cot here. Um, unless you wanted to sleep on the floor, but yeah. That would still be preferable. <laughs> Alright, well, I will... Not uh, haven. I will let you get to work. So, right. pat you on the shoulder. Then says, uh, you know, I appreciate you, you know, making everything even here. And, uh, yeah, I'll let you get to work. And he leaves. So now, as soon as he's gone, Jonathan does a fist pump. Yes! <laughs> it's time to I'm, buy a I'm, cot I'm, I'm, and a laptop. <laughs> I'm equal parts pissed off at this guy for making me work for free, but new house. <laughs> so it's not you're really to myself. So, you know. It even sucked. I, I am okay with this outcome. All right. It's so because of a fucking free son. So speaking of being okay with what's happening, let's move back to Derek and his encounter with his parents. Right. So, Dalworth, you back? I am. All right. Let's hear it. All right. Okay. So. What I'll tell my parents is that my uh, that the niece that the niece was uh, cheating on me mm -hmm. with uh, with the manager with my manager at the zoo, and when I found out about this, I uh, got a little bit heated and I went off on uh, both of them. I ended up getting fired for that. And also, of course, you know, Denise broke up with me. So yeah. I was so distraught you and heartbroken. <laughs> my, my, good, my good friend uh, that I met at the zoo decided to take me in, and Gary. That's why I'm uh, living with him. All right. Yeah, that All makes right. sense. All right. Yeah, that's that's... that you met Stephen at the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be Terry, actually. He's the okay. one they're encountering. Possibly. That's a, that's a pretty coherent story. It's probably yeah. better than what most of us could do. Yeah. That was really good. I'm not going to require a roll for any of that. Um, the next step is the harder one. Why won't you meet them at the airport, and why won't you meet them at any time during the day while they're here? Because your parents probably go to bed fairly early, I would assume. Um, I mean, in the middle of summer, probably, like, right as the sun is setting, I would imagine, yeah, if they're, so like, an older couple. When are you going to see these people? 
Well, as a uh, as a uh, reason, I mean, as a um, part of the uh, reasoning that uh, my friend Stephen allowed me to stay with him mm-hmm. was that he was uh, I have to do a bit of work for him in the daytime and uh, also, until dusk. <laughs> yes, and also a reason I can't come pick him up or come meet them is because uh, and obviously I lost my job. My car was a uh, foreclosed on or oh, you've, hit, you've hit the skids there boy having a yeah, yeah. So, all right wow give me a uh give me a charisma plus uh hmm a charisma plus uh empathy Your mother's going to know you're lying. <laughs> I think the difficulty's 12 on that. <laughs> that is a uh, 4. All right. Seduction, like, <laughs> uh, specialty don't count here. I'm just going to throw that one out there. Uh, all right. Yeah, so you... You spend the first couple hours of the night, like, cra- master crafting this message that you're going to send. And uh, you send it off. And so it's obviously going to be a little while before they get back to you, because they're not going to be up at the middle of the night to send you back an email message. But, yeah, so we'll see how this goes tomorrow night when you wake up. (sighs) Your mother's going to be so concerned. Your father will, of course, tell her not to worry and let the boy solve his own problems. (laughs) But no, she's going to be like, but he's my baby! (laughs) All right. So, <clears throat> and um, Ryan. Yeah. You have also received a message. Also, through, similarly through your social media. Boy. Uh, it's from Carrie. Oh God. Oh no. Uh, he's asking oh, you to meet him at a location on the street in Gary. Not an address, but like a, just a location. He gives you like a street and like a block. It's first and first. It's the nexus of the universe. So he asks you uh, also to make sure that you come alone. I reply asking for details. Uh, he says he can't give them to you. In a, in a method as unsecure as just, like, electronic communications. This has to be verbal yeah. to verbal. So the problem is, right, last time, if I just told him to fuck off, uh, you know, he would have gotten himself killed. Mm-hmm. But yeah. now this time, I feel like he's got too much of a relationship with me, and I'm going to get in trouble if he does that. Yeah, because he's your ghoul now. <laughs> Yeah, if he were to do something as stupid, and then the prince got a hold of him. You know, like burn down Gary. (laughs) Is the public knowledge that this guy is my girl? Um, It's not. However, if vampire authorities, who would definitely be interested in picking this guy up, he burnt down half of Gary, and they questioned him, he would reveal it. I mean, he doesn't have anything to to stand up to domination. We need to. It's not known that this guy is the one who started the fire, is it? No, but if he does, if you don't keep control of this situation and he does more things stupid and he does get caught by Modius or something, an investigation is going to bring all sorts of shit to light that you don't want to come to light. It is definitely not safe to let this guy run on his own. He's going to talk about the tanker. I will head to the rendezvous point with all my equipment obfuscated. All right. I love that Ryan's the responsible one in this scenario. <laughs> I mean, the and the news has made it very clear. They're the tanker murderers. Yes. Like, they're looking for a second guy. Even him being caught by the mortal authorities wouldn't be great. No, it wouldn't be. I mean, they they think he was crazy crack addict, but, you know, when he starts talking about vampires. Does he know about the whole vampire thing? Uh, he's got a fair idea at this yeah, point. So, you yeah, so. Cool we, we got to We got to get him under control. All right. Don't worry. I've got as to much on. as a Mohegan oh, ghoul can yeah. be under control. All right. So you head to the location. All right. So you're there. 
um, and you're kind of hanging out, and uh, you notice, um, give me a perception plus alertness. Okay, that is six with a specialty. Okay. So there are a few people milling around, even late at night, because it's right in front of a police station. Um, <laughs> but after a little while, you do spot a guy who's kind of like looking shifty by like a bus stop, um, and you do recognize him as Carrie. Is he alone? Um, from what you can see, yeah. In how many people's potential line of sight is this? Um, if you were to just kind of get behind the, the bus stop, you could be out of sight of basically everyone. All right. Sneak up on him and stake him. <laughs> stake um, him? He, he's, stake a, him. A, he's a human. He's a ghoul. Yeah. You're going to kill him. Yeah. All right. Oh. All right, now nah, we're right, fine. Now nah, right, I gotta think about this. Because <laughs> you can unobfuscate not in front of anyone, but he's in the bus stop, so he's well in view of this police station. <laughs> so, I was about to say, like, this is a really bad idea. <laughs> hmm. All right, one second. Just let me look at my equipment here. All right. Bolos. <laughs> Ranged, you just you just throw them, and then you wound up, and then you just drag them off. If only you could crouch and get behind him and use a context-sensitive E command to just perform a takedown. <laughs> Alright, note to self, get chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I'd probably whoop you some up in the lab. Uh, for now, anyway, uh, fuck's sake. So what I need to I mean, could I just conk him on the head? Um, give me a second. I need to look something up real quick. Sure. So yeah, as for conking him on the head, he's actually like in like a bus shelter, like where it is sheltered against like rain and stuff. So if you wanted to get up to him, you would either have to bust through the wall behind him, or you would have to come up in front of him, basically. And then you'd be inside. Um, yeah, but on both these cases. Yeah, you could do that. Um, you would have to also be aware that you need to like knock him out instantly and get him somewhere because you're again right in front of a police station. Yeah. And he's probably on meth. Also, yeah, if you don't knock him out instantly, uh, this escalates quickly. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be great. All right. So, what is it that you're uh, going to do? Gosh, you're both going to be arrested. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I need, uh, I need advice, guys. <laughs> I just talk to him. Um, you think I should um, just just talk to him, see what he wants, see if you can talk him into going somewhere else with you. All right, I'll talk to him. All right, because I really feel like the two of you were going to be arrested. <laughs> okay. So as soon as he sees you, he's like, ah. Come here, man. And he kind of motions you into the bus shelter. All right, head in. All right. So he sits down next to you and kind of like, he's like sitting really close to you and like whispering in your ear. Um, also, he smells I'm like, sure. he smells like stale beer and... And urine. And like meth, obviously. <laughs> he, he's, he's pretty disgusting. Um, and he's wearing the same clothes that he was wearing like two months ago when he burnt down half the so city. So he smells like stale smoke as well. Yeah. So, he's like, man, it's a good thing you're here, man. So, I don't know what you've been doing, but I've been working on, like, a plan. Ryan doesn't say anything. Alright. 
So I'm going to lay this shit out for you. Because of the little incident, I don't want to point fingers, but because someone let the authorities know about the original plan, we need to work together. I can't just, you know, obviously I blame you a little bit, but we can't let it divide us. We need to stick together now more than ever. Because the cops, man, the cops are on to us. Still not saying anything? Certainly not. All right. <laughs> so, first thing, I'm going to lay out the plan. Um, I don't suppose you have just a little bit of math. Do I? I mean, I assume you do, yeah. You're a drug dealer. Is there any way I could uh, use this opportunity to knock him out? Um, I mean, you could try. Again, it probably has to be, like, one hit, and if it's not... No, it's no, not. I mean, uh, do I have any drugs that would, like, you know... No. Send them to sleep? Nah. Chloroform's a good idea, but you still need Steven to make it for you. Yeah, okay. Uh... Uh, no, I don't have any. Ah, damn. But, alright, man. Um, I don't suppose you have any of that other stuff you gave me. And he seems to be kind of hinting as to, kind of oh. like, yeah, kind of nods towards, you know, your wrist. Huh. Nah, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you know you need a sidekick, Ryan. You know you do. No, I don't want this guy to have a blood point. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I thought you were gonna ghoulize him. Then he's bloodbound. He is ghoulized. It's true, he is already one step bloodbound. Oh, that's true. I would blo Did I not blood bond him fully by now? No, uh, you didn't have time because he disappeared that literally that uh, same night. So he's not bloodbound to you yet. Once he's bloodbound, he has to do what you say. He doesn't really. Okay. You have to make it's a willpower roll. It's not, it's not like dominate. Um, actually, it's pretty similar. You have to make a willpower roll in order to resist it. Um, and as Steven already demonstrated, this guy's willpower is shit. Yeah, this guy has no willpower. If I, if I have him on level 2... Blood bond. Would that be enough to try and talk him out of this? I mean, yeah, it's possible. All right, I'll try it. Give him a blood. All right. So he basically, yeah, he takes. Wait, your... wait. How much blood do I have? Wait. You have exactly the same amount as you had before. I have five. So yeah, he will. Basically, you kind of get into the shadows a little bit, and sneak him a little bit of your blood. And as soon so as he's finished, he, he seems... Right, right, right. Is, he getting, is he getting out of sight? Is he going behind the bus stop right? Yeah, I was going to say, this is the opportunity. You're, like, not here in front of everybody. Let's go somewhere a little more private. This is your opportunity. Yeah, could I ask him, can we go somewhere? All right. Um, give me a manipulation plus subterfuge. Six. He's like, oh, no, no, man. Well, I'll tell you what, you make a good point, we'll do that later. We got business to take care of first, man. And you know me, it's always business first, pleasure second. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, like, man, I've come up with another plan. Alright. What's the plan? Alright. So, here's the thing. The cops are on to us. We know that. We need to stop their investigation. And how better to get the cops off their case than this? You've got those sneaky invisible powers. Go into the police station, break into the evidence room, and guess what I saved from the tanker? And he reaches under the bench and pulls out a jerry can with more gas. <laughs> Set the evidence room on fire. That's going to destroy all the evidence they have. 
No one's going to know shit. And then, once the police station is on fire, it's going to be chaos. That's when you find Detective Stevens, that motherfucker who's on to us. You acquire him, bring him out. I got the car ready. We drive off back to your guy Steven's place, and he does his mind powers on him to convince him that there's nothing going on. Boom. Investigation goes away. <laughs> I still haven't given him the blow point yet, right? No. Okay, I boost my strength. All right. Oh, and by the way, uh, what is your humanity currently? Five. All right. So, uh, also, he has completely uh, blunted your emotions, leaving you desensitized. Uh, so, yeah, basically any sort of reaction you might have had that this is a stupid idea has been negated into just sort of a dull... Apparently just this man has his own have, oh. impression of things going on. How? Uh, are you familiar with Dementation 1? Yeah. You fed him a blood point earlier. He's a ghoul. He got one of your clan disciplines that you had. He took dementation. I dementate myself back. <laughs> you can't dementate yourself. <laughs> no. He Malkavian. He out he me. He just out Malkavian to you. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't a Malkavian. I can't so dementate myself. Where does it say you can't dementate yourself? But do you realize the, what's going on? The vampire may stir his victim's emotions. It is specifically your victim. Also, I just to make it clear... Also make it clear, uh, dementation works just as well on vampires as it does on mortals. Why can't I be my own victim? Ah, uh, it just doesn't work that way. You have too much really self-esteem. You can't I'm victimize sorry, yourself. you have to face the fact you've been out Malkavian. You know, you know you're going in there, Ryan. You know that this is your plan. Come on. The last plan worked out fine. You're a Malkavian. Embrace that. You can't be rational and, like, you, you're not Steven. You're Ryan. So yeah, this... but I've got uh, I've got Lisa, you know. Lucy. <laughs> oh my God, you don't even know her name. <laughs> yeah, so I'm so demented right now. Yeah? <laughs> so yeah, um, it is just affecting your emotions. So you still can rationally decide these things, but any sort of like emotional reaction you have to this guy basically dragging you into the exact same mess again is gone. Okay. Well, surely. <laughs> Surely I can still say then that logically Ryan realizes this is a bad idea and it's more optimal to try to just take him out. Um, yeah. All right, cool. Animal Cavian think rational. That's a good point. Yes. <laughs> Spending a point on the celerity. All right. Bash him on the head. All right, so give me a dexterity plus, me uh, well, you don't have a weapon out, um, so dexterity plus brawl. Will I have, will, can I grab my gun first to use it? Um, yeah, if you want to pull out your gun. Are you going to shoot him? No, bash him. All right. I presume guy. that's better than my bare hands, like. Um, yeah, although, I mean, when you're clearly reaching into your jacket to your gun, he's gonna know what's up. Alright, I'll use my celerity to grab it faster. Alright. So I can put, do, 
So I can pull it out and hit him at the same turn. Okay, dexterity plus melee. Eight. Okay. Can I spend a point of uh, celerity for next turn as well? Yeah. So what is your strength? Four. And you have one point of potence. Yep. All right. I'm going All right. for a knockout, by the way. Yes. Yeah. So um, you try and basically hit him upside the head with his gun, and you basically knock him to the side, and he falls dazed to the ground and starts screaming for help. So he attempts to start scrambling away from you, although he seems pretty severely injured, so he's not moving that fast. Pick him up uh, can, I, can I assess the situation without wasting a turn? Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, he is trying to scramble away, and you see that the people who are standing outside the police station now looking over at the bus stop where you're at. Um... And you can see some of, like, at least one person has gone inside the station. Kerry can't be that heavy. He's got to be, like, drug addict skinny, right? Yeah. He's not that heavy. Can you just sling him over your shoulder and run away? Well, so the question is, do I waste turn bashing him again, or will do I risk carrying him while he struggles? It's up to you. You bash him again, are you going to kill him? Bash him again. Um, he can do, you do think, specifically Mary? bashing damage to just knock him out. Uh, Although bashing damage, humans bash. can soak that, so... I will attempt to grab him and run away. Alright. Uh, I guess try to yeah, run away to uh, a nearby hiding spot. Okay, are you using your celerity to run faster? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, give me a strength check. Four. Okay. Okay. So, he attempts to escape and continues screaming for help. And uh, he also starts screaming, uh, the tanker murderer has me. The tanker murderer <laughs> is taking me away. Um, so, oh, a smart one. <laughs> so you start sprinting away. Um, where exactly are you headed towards? I should ask you this first. <laughs> Am I in my drug-selling fake appearance? Um... Well, you've started combat, so not anymore, no. Oh, it breaks disguises as well? Yeah, it breaks off the escape. Alright, fair. Well... <laughs> Do you have I, the ball of lava over your face? <laughs> I, I hope so. Okay. Any nearby alleys and buildings I can slip into? Um, yeah, give me a Wits plus Stealth. Six. Okay. Um, you cannot find anything like that anywhere nearby. Are you serious? I'm serious, yes. I'm looking at no successes oh right God. now. I will attempt to run down the street and then try again. So run down with my celerity speeds. All right. What is your current blood level? Two. All right. You're actually at somewhat thing of a dis of an advantage because you've been dementated because it does reduce the difficulty of your uh, frenzy. Um, but I am going to require probably a self control roll here. Not to just eat carry right where he's yeah. sits. Okay, my self control is four. All right, and your blood level is two. Yep. So, we'll roll two. Alright, 
You're not in frenzy yet. Yet. Close. And, uh, yeah, so you're continuing down the street, and now you hear the sound of police sirens of a police car behind you. And, uh, Carrie continues to scream and thrash, so we are going to need another strength check. Four. Right. All right, yep, you still got a hold of him. All right. So, give me another wits plus stealth. Six. All right. Uh, yes, you do manage to find an alley, although now that there's someone directly behind you, you're not going to have that easy of a time hiding with, obviously, a screaming meth addict on your back. Well, I'll have to try. All right. Yep. So, so you I guess I'll safe. try to enter the alley. Okay. And if I can find somewhere to stop, come someone on the head and try to knock them out this time. All right. So, uh, he, you drop him, and give me a, uh, dexterity plus melee. Ace. Okay. Yeah, you hit him. And your strength is four. Yep. Alright, so you try and knock him on the side of the head. I'm going to have to keep track of how much damage he's taken. Alright. And, uh, yeah, he continues screaming and uh, thrashing, and so the police basically come around and they put their light in there, and then, like, flailing, you're kind of ducked down behind a dumpster, and then flailing limbs of the meth addict, like, leap out. He's trying to wave them over to to uh, where you guys are. So you see the cops uh, pull out, they have their guns drawn, and they start basically saying, you know, just come out with your hands up now. So far, there are only the two cops. So far. <laughs> Can I obfuscate right from them, to and them, even though Harry sees me? What was that, David? And I obfuscate from the cops, even though Harry can see me? Um... I don't know if that... Let me read the description. What does Demon take to? It lets you see things that aren't there. Um, I'm going to say no on this one. Yeah. You're going to have to get away from the actual struggle and find some other way to hide again. If you're able to get away from... Uh, carry, then yes, you will be able to hide. Carry's in the clutches of the police. And things get a lot worse, yeah. And things go bad. But you can't really take out police officers. Well, you can. Well, we don't want to kill police officers. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Because then you're not just tanker murderers, you're cop killers. Boy, the tanker murderer saga has sure expanded. Um. So. Hmm. 
Yeah, I almost feel like going in and setting fire to the evidence might <laughs> have been a better option. <laughs> Did you leave the gasoline can back at the bus stop? Uh, no one said to pick it up, so I assume it's still there. Probably it got knocked over in the struggle. I wouldn't be surprised if there's gasoline leaking everywhere. The calling card of the tanker murderers. All right. All right. Uh... All right. Can I just botch car again? Uh, yes, you can. I'll see if I can get it from before the cops around the corner or whatever. Okay. So, uh, dexterity plus, uh, brawl. Or, uh, melee. Ace. Alright. And then four strength. One yep. potence. See what his own penalty is. All right. So he is still up and fighting, and at this point, uh, he basically breaks away from you and starts running towards the cops. Basically, uh, just continuing to scream that the tanker murderer is after him. All right, fine. So no one's looking at me now. I'll obfuscate now. All right. Yep. Yeah, you obfuscate. Alright, I'll try to get a bit of distance from myself and them and see how these cops respond to the meth head that's running at them. Alright. So, um, yeah, so they start, they take him into custody. I mean, they basically saw you drag him off, so they know that he's the victim here. Um, so they basically right. put him uh, into handcuffs and put him in the back of the car just for safekeeping. And then they start moving down the alley after a little ways, basically searching... For you. Okay. So yeah, and yeah. you also notice that more police cars have also shown up uh, around the alley as well, and more cops are getting out. Yeah, whatever. Try to get, try to find a canopy, climb up to the roof or something. Yeah, you're able to get up there. Not too much problem. All right. Head back home, forget this happened. I'm sure there will be no fallout from this whatsoever. No, I'll have to I'll have to get my meth head back. Are they bringing him back to the same station? Um, yes, after a long I mean, it takes a while because there's still there's basically a manhunt going on, but eventually someone takes him a five block perimeter. Yeah, so eventually someone takes him back because uh, also, you know, he started yelling that the tanker murderers are there. The other thing that you notice is that a like a black like government vehicle shows up and a guy in a suit comes out. He looks like probably, some sort of federal agent. Probably William Shepard. Yeah, and he goes and he uh, starts talking with Carrie in the back oh, seat. Oh, shit. Okay. I'll have to think about this. Mm-hmm. Can I demon? Can I demon save people in the car from here? Um. Um. You're, you can't really see inside the car. You only saw them put him in, so no, not really. If you got closer, then yes, you could. Could I have demon faced with him while he was on his way to the car? Um, you could have, but you didn't mention it, so 
I mean, you said you see him get into the car. It's not exactly like I had a chance. I mean... When I see him going to the car, can I try, please? Uh, if you want to... Uh, I mean, you're obfuscated, so there's no problem with you trying to sneak closer and do it. Can I not do it while he's walking to the car? Uh... Was I given a chance to? Come on. I mean, I feel like it's something that you didn't think of until later on. Also, I will say, you do have to spend a blood point in order to do this. So that is one more thing to keep in mind. Oh, really? Yes, you spend a blood point and roll manipulation plus subterfuge. Also, did you take um, off a blood point for when you did this before to the reporter? Uh, no, because I'm going by the Dark Ages description. It doesn't say that here. All right. Are you using a 20th anniversary? No, I'm using revised edition. Revised edition, all right. So am I on one blood point then? Um, I'm let you get away with it and keep you at two, since we already rolled using two for a self-control roll. Okay. But you will be on one if you want to, uh, haunting this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, if you want to do it, it's no problem to get up to the car to do it. Uh, you will have to decide which one of the two you want to haunting, yeah. since you only get one shot. I don't know shot. what to do at all. I mean, you can just leave it as well. Mm. And the hunter will come after us. You're going to leave it and then get back there, and it seems like, all right, so what we're going to need to do is you're going to need to obfuscate and break in, then set a fire in the evidence room, then kill <laughs> Harry, <laughs> and then take him, the uh, investigators, out so that I can dominate them. So Carrie's been in the house, Mary, so like, you know. Yes, Carrie. Yeah. Carrie does know the location of the Haven. So they might end up coming to your house as part of the investigation. How bad would that be? Mary went to the other room. Did you hear that? What? Uh, Carrie knows the location of your Haven. Yes, I know. And he's probably telling the hunter where we are. But yeah, so fun. like... Mm -hmm. You know, so you might get some police showing up at your house. How big a deal would that be? Like, in theory, all you'd have to do is show that you have well, no relation to the Well, if they show up the during the day, um, that might be more of a problem. Yeah. One thing I will point out is that because he is obviously a meth head and he's a Malkavian ghoul, he's not exactly... Lucid. I mean, they're going to get the story out of him, but you may have some time while he rants before it become, before he gets yeah, to any important that, evidence. That rantiness. Now, the hunter is the only one that I'm really concerned about. The police are going to be like, oh, this guy's not that crazy. Mm -hmm. You don't know anyone's the hunter. Uh, William Shepard, the FBI guy, the guy who pulled up in the black SUV, he's a hunter. He's William Shepherd. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna guarantee you that's who that is. If it were just the police, I wouldn't be as concerned. But when Zach said the black, all right, what do you think we should do? Well, I don't know. There's 
as much you can do at this point. Well, if I leave this, it's going to come back to us. Yeah, well, we're going to have to take out these hunters. Mm -hmm. That's what we're just going to have to do. Or we're going to have to come to some sort of truce. I assume you've just called Steven on the roof at this point to talk this over with him in character. Well. How much self-control does Steven have? <laughs> uh, well, it's on your character sheet. I've got four. <laughs> and Ryan really, he pushes me on that hole. Yeah. Because I get this call while Carrie's... Now Ryan himself is probably still very calm about this, because, again, your emotions have been dementated down. That's close. Um. <laughs> so he's very relaxed explaining mm -hmm. this. So here's what happened. Um, so I don't know what, I mean, there's no way you're going to get extricate Carrie from these police and the hunter at this point. No. So I think we just got to let it be. I mean, well, I don't know. It depends on whether or not you think your best bet is to strike now or to strike later. Well, what? We come down there, guns a blazing. <laughs> you know, I just I don't feel like that's the best option either. Oh, we could gather the party here for an operation right away to get carried back or something. Because so, while you don't have time to prepare anything, also the police haven't had time to prepare any sort of defense of him. Right, but then what? I, I some old British guy shows up and says, <laughs> "Hey, release him into my custody." I mean, I don't know what you'd try. <laughs> Come out. We can kidnap him out. How? He is already, I will say, substantially injured from the fight. So, if you guys did want to fully take him out, it's easier now than it would be later after he's healed. So, all right, all right. Do I know where the sniper rifle is? Yes. All right. I I'm grab the sniper also. rifle, and I head down. <laughs> Who all are you bringing with you? Well, Terry needs to drive me. Okay. Is Derek coming Derek, along as well? Derek, do you want to come to the murder Sorry. of this? I'm going to lose my one humanity that I, or my humanity <laughs> gained, that I yeah. just gained. No, I'll, I'll take him out. Can you snipe? Yes. Now, Stallworth, you want to come? If I don't need so why are we coming? If you're if you're gonna snipe him, well, he doesn't have the right. Yeah. Okay, so I'll bring the. Right I don't have a sniper. All right, so you're sa okay. So I'm bringing you the sniper rifle. All right, so we're meeting him Does on the rooftop. Sniper, Derek, you want to come with us? Does your sniper have a silencer? No, it doesn't. No, it does not. Okay, well, it's not that much of a help then, is it? Um, we are going to be ranged. We're going to be out of the out of the uh, perimeter that they've set up. Well, set it's up. a city. You can only go so far as the buildings will allow you. Well, if uh, can my um, Earth Bell, can I do that for me and someone else? No, you can only do it for yourself. Oh, uh, good thing, uh, Sire. That would have been a good idea. But if you do only one shot. They're not going to be able to tell the direction. No, and I, I will point out, like, if you shoot him, even if you have a silenced rifle, when he dies from a rifle shot, they're, they're going to know. They're going to kind of know what's going so, on. So, and if you just take the one shot, they're not going to be able to know which direction. We're going to be able to get away, is what I'm saying. We're going to be far enough back, we're right. going to be able to get away. All right. They're going to know All it was right, the so. tanker murderer that took him out. <laughs> but. You know, we uh, can silence him before they can... Down with the weapon. All right, so I'm... The weapon and some I'm running down. Terry and I are running down right. with the rifle. So we're going to quickly go over to Jonathan. Um, you're basically in your office getting things set up, getting your orders in for all the equipment that you need down there. Um, when you hear just a hell of a racket nearby, like there are just cop cars going by like crazy towards something in basically a few blocks away. As you kind of lean out the window, you can see that, like, the street is just filled with, like, flashing red and blue lights. And a sniper bolt whizzes by his head. <laughs> <laughs> so what does he exactly repeat that, please? Um, yeah, so you just see that the street is basically, just a couple blocks down, is filled with cop cars. Some sort of mess has happened. 
Uh, what if I use Auspex? Can I see further? Um, yeah, you can kind of see that the cops are spreading out, and you can kind of hear um, a little bit. I mean, if you got a little bit closer, you could maybe hear some of what they're saying. All right. Well, this is probably a dumb idea, but let's try it. Let's get a bit closer just to here, from far away still. All right, so you head downstairs and you kind of listen to what the cops are saying. Lock Apparent... the doors. Lock all the doors. All right, yeah. You set the security system. So yeah, apparently, um, as you're coming down to see them, a cop is actually coming up to, uh, basically to you. He says, oh, I, I guess you're working late. Yeah, sure I am. Uh, we're actually... So, uh, what happened here? Yeah, we're looking for someone. I was just coming to knock on the door to see if anyone's in here. There's been some sort of attack just a little ways away from here, and um, we're currently looking for the perpetrator. And he gives you a brief description of someone about Ryan's height, about Ryan's build, wearing a ball of clava like you see Ryan wearing a and lot. And he says, this could be related and to tank <laughs> murders. <laughs> and <laughs> apparently he attacks some meth head who was screaming that he was being attacked by one of the tanker murderers. Right. Well, at this point, I think I would like to activate presence free on this guy. All right. So the role for that would be it's it's charisma plus empathy. I, I think. think so. I have book open, so I'll just look it up. Right. It is appearance plus empathy. Same thing. I still have a specialty here. Okay. So that's a seven with a specialty. Perhaps you've noticed how... No, stop. <laughs> well, so I'll say, like, wow, that sounds really worrying. Could you um, tell me more about that, please? Um, I might be able to help you. Um, so he actually doesn't seem that impressed by how hot you are. It's possible that he is interested in women. As well as he's heterosexual. What? <laughs> God, those ugly freaks. Ugh. Um, so what was it you were asking him? Just uh, more information, and maybe I can help you here. Um, he's like, I, I know the area quite well. Uh, he says, probably, you know, it's dangerous for you to get involved. You should probably just, you know, I would suggest you just stay inside, lock the door, um, and if you do see anyone suspicious hanging around, be sure to call the police um, and let us know. All right, then. Well, good luck on your search, officer. All right, so he heads away. Right, I'll head inside, and I will, once I'm out of earshot, which will totally be soon, I will call Steven and inform him of this. <laughs> All right, so... In the car, I get a call. Yeah, basically. All right, so, uh, yes, this is Steven. Uh, hey, Steven, it's Jonathan. Hello? Yes? Do you know where Ryan is right now? <laughs> yes, I do. I'm going to meet him with a sniper rifle. <laughs> He's got himself into a bit of a pickle. Right, the police are looking for him. All right, anything you can do to help will be appreciated. Uh, we need to. Carrie is in their custody. Well, what would you? What would you need for me to do to help? We need to get a clear shot so we can take out Carrie. <laughs> <sighs> well, I'll uh, stick around, I suppose. Yeah, there's a there's a hunter there as well. We need we need to silence Carrie before. Before he gets too much information. But hold on, who's Carrie? Who is Carrie even? Uh, Carrie is the guy that set fire to Gary. Ah. Uh, He's a ghoul, just like uh, Carrie. He's the guy that <laughs> stole the gas tanker. Ah, uh, right, right, him. Yeah. No, I never caught his name, I don't think. Well, apparently it's Carrie. It's Carrie. <laughs> just so you know, uh, we gotta silence him. So I'm on my way to meet Ryan. Um, so if he, anything you can do to help to keep the police uh, presence contained, all whatever. right, all right. I'll help, but on one, I'll help, but on one condition. Um, Absolutely no harming, her, her, fuck, harming of the police officers. Uh, we're gonna attempt to, to yes keep that at a minimum, obviously. All right then. <laughs> That's why we would or, like to get a clear or, shot at Carrie so there's no collateral damage. Or any other civilians for that matter. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'll see what I can do. All right. Thank you. All right. 
So, uh, so just to be clear here, uh, this guy, Kerry, how much of a piece of shit is he, do I think? Um, well, he has set fire to half of the city. Um, right, right. He's partially ghoulized by Malkavian. As far as what you know, he is one of the tanker murderers. So, I mean, you've seen the shot on the news where he does gun a guy down in cold blood and then run I off with a tanker sure, of gas. I just want to make sure that, I am, that I'm in character justified in yeah, letting this guy. Yeah, I was a meth head. If you're helping directly, I would call for a conscience roll, but a very easy difficulty on the conscience roll. So, um... Yeah. Okay. No, he's a, he's a liability at this point. I mean, it's wrong, but it's as unwrong as something wrong can no. be. It's going to be easily justified. <laughs> I feel. All right. All right. Well, I hope I hope so. All right. <laughs> unless unless Jonathan's got a, a Catholic background and he really wants to make himself feel guilty about something. So. All right. So, uh, yeah, so Terry and Steven pull up outside the, uh, the cordoned off area, and there is, basically, there's a police presence there, so you're gonna have to uh, find talk your way through. Or something. No, I'm gonna, I'm, where is, where is Ryan at? He's on a rooftop. Um, he's in a rooftop, but they are, like, they're blocking off Okay, the but area. I have movement of the mind. You're gonna fly up there? So, if, if I can find, like, an alleyway back a uh -huh. ways... And I can get up on a rooftop. I can get to Ryan. All right. Give me a willpower roll then. Okay. And so spend a blood power, a blood point, point, and a willpower point. Okay. And so that is five. All right. Because I'm not going to attempt to talk my way through. The British guy with the sniper rifle is not getting through the police court. Okay. So yes, you do feel yourself kind of lift up. You've never tried this before. So it doesn't. I've only, I guess, not from on myself. Okay. And yeah, yeah. I mean, you've never mm -hmm. flown before, and even if you've levitated yourself in the lab, it's a little bit different than when you're looking over a sheer drop down, like you know, mm -hmm. six or seven stories. So I am going to call for a courage roll. All right, that is four. Yes. So you power through. You keep okay. your focus, and you levitate over. Um, fortunately, it's kind of, there's no full moon out tonight, so you're not immediately apparent to anyone down okay. below. Stay away from the roof edges and try Jonathan has Auspex, so I'll give him a Perception plus Alertness. Alright then, Perception 3, Alertness 2, 5. Alright. Yeah, you see a weird figure, like a large <laughs> bat, just pass <laughs> overhead, and you're not sure what's up with that. But, yeah. Uh, should I tell Steven? <laughs> I mean, if you want to. If you want to send me a text. I'll send you a text just to be sure. Alright, so yeah, you land so on... I, I don't suppose I would know anything about that, so it's, no. it's just a weird sight I'm seeing. So yeah, you land on Ryan's roof and you get a text message. Alright, I will text back. It was me. No worries. Alright. All right, All right, so I'm there with, with you, Ryan. You text me bad, back in bad form. <laughs> bad form, yes. Impressive. Well, I wasn't actually It wasn't in bat form. form. It I'm was not just, as a you was just flying. I did not actually turn into a bat. That's just how you perceived me because you can't imagine a human flying. And it's night. And it's night. And he's like... And you're conditioned to believe, you know, in like bats and things. All right. So, Ryan, Steven lands on your roof holding a sniper rifle. All right, I hand it over. Do what you, you need to go. do. So, you have Hello. a scope, and you can take time to aim so that you get a bonus to your dexterity plus firearms rating. The bonus can only be as high as your perception rating. Okay. Steven, do you have any blood pills? I do. Could I have some, please? How many do you want? I have five left. Can I have five? Okay. Put <laughs> them into your palm. All right. So you take them? Yep. All right. So you're one more step bloodbound. 
You are two yep. steps blood bound to me. All right, so I have zero pills now. I'm going to write that down. So you do feel, I mean, you're not that emotional still, but, you know, there is a certain gratefulness towards Stephen for being willing okay. to step in and, and help I you out of this jam. And I imagine a 13 stroking of the rifle at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm imagining. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he says, in pure Golgo 13... Non-committal. So are you going to fly away before the shot takes place? Um, I may stand uh, back. Because he can obfuscate to get away, but you but cannot. But I can, okay, so I, uh, will, Stephen, I will meander away. Stephen, you should literally just escape now. <laughs> yeah, okay, so do I need to spend another... Uh, um, not if you just okay. kept it active. Okay, so... <laughs> so you you floated over I to Ryan. Floated over to give him. And I'm hovering as your guardian angel. Here is the rifle. Here are my blood pills. And then I float away. <laughs> I'm like some really uh, like old, wrinkly man, fairy godmother kind of thing. So yeah, Jonathan, as you're hanging out there, you also see the figure fly back, and it does look man shaped <laughs> this, this time. Oh yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> kind of visible up there. All right. Well, you know, I tried to stay in the shadows. You have aspects, though. So you have time to aim, time to get ready. Um, is there anything you guys want to do to try and draw out Carrie, or are you just going to make the shot from where he is now? Is he in the car? Yes, he is currently in the we car. We need to get him out of the car. Do I have line of sight? You do have line of sight in the car. The difficulty is higher, so if the other players did have a way to get him out, you would reduce the difficulty. I know Jonathan was saying that he was considering something like that. I don't know if you guys have an actual plan. I don't know, Jonathan, what do you think? How are we gonna get how are we gonna get this guy out of here? We gotta get him out of the car. Uh I might be able to lure him out. That would require actually getting close to him without the police seeing it. Uh, he, what, what car is he in? Uh, in a police car. He is in, well, he's not in a police car. He's actually, they took him out. They put him in the government car. Oh, he's in the government car. Where is that located in the police barricade? Um, basically right in the middle. Uh, well, if we're just trying to get him out the car, then I suppose I could, uh, I could talk to an uh, animal and have him... Wait, you uh, know, now, Derek the is with us. Is it William Shepard that is the hunter? Um, yes, uh, William Shepard, you are familiar with who William Shepard is, and if you go around to the public side of this, you can kind of make out that, you can't make out him, but you can make out that it looks exactly like the car that William Shepard had. So, didn't he give you his car mm. or something, Derek? And you do have his business card. Oh, is that the, uh, is that the, uh... The investigator that came to me while yep. I was in the shopping market that one time? Yep, the guy who went into the zoo, and you didn't uh, see him after that. Until now. Okay, oh uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure I said I was called. Alright, so, alright, so Derek's got the connection. So, um, so, alright, so, and William Shepard is talking to Carrie, is that? Yes, he is in his own car talking to Carrie. Alright, so, um, alright, so we gotta use that. So is Jonathan next to Derek? Can we team up a Jonathan Derek thing here? Jonathan maneuvering Derek over to William Shepard with his whole charisma. Oh, we need to talk to William. And the police were all like, "Yes, you're so hot, but we'll let you through." And then, and then, and then Derek going, I, "Oh I yeah, could, I know." Uh, I could maybe try to use my first level of uh, presence to make the police think something important is elsewhere, like lure them away. Yeah. Or something. Anyway, and then get Derek over there to William and, and try and be like, oh yeah, no, I've got information and bring Carrie out here for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm up on the roof handing the gun over, so. I mean, it you're basically work. back with Terry by this point. Well, well, there's not really much I can do here but dominate people. I can dominate people too, I guess. Yeah. So, what do you want to do? Oh. Do you want to draw attention to yourself sure. with presence? You want to send Derek in? I, I, I could I could call the police over and then have Derek go. All right, so Stephen will go with Derek in case we need to dominate. But yeah, if Jonathan wants to uh, draw attention to himself, 
so that people are distracted. And then Derek and I can maybe get in to get Carrie out of the car. All right. Is that a way? Is that a thing? Yeah, you could try that. Do I feel like this is a bubble plan? <laughs> well, we'll find out. So you are trying to use awe to draw attention to yourself, yes? Who are we yeah, starting? Pull the pol I'll, I'll pull the police over here, yeah. That's how All we're right. starting. Charisma plus performance. Charisma five, captivate, performance one, six, specialty. All right. So you start trying to draw attention to yourself, um, but it seems like the cops are mostly focused on what's going on. You don't really get too much attention. So as you're let's, doing let's, that... Let's try, let's, try, let's try the good old-fashioned just call out to them then. All right, yeah. Excuse me, officers, I'll call out. I'll still use them as best as I can. All right. So you start trying to draw attention onto yourself, and we will move over towards the other two. So Derek and Stephen, you guys are heading in. Mm-hmm. And um, you're basically stopped by cops at the barricade line. And I say, no, it's fine. We have important business with uh, William, with, uh, with uh, Director, with uh, Detective Shepard over there. And I'm, I'm dominating. I'm like, no, right. it's fine. We need Manipulation to Manipulation plus leadership. A seven. All right. So you start trying to force your way past these guys. And uh, you get do manage to get, um, I mean, you start dominating people, they start letting you through, and then, like, other cops come over, they start trying to get past you. But, Derek, you give me a manipulation plus, give me a wits plus subterfuge. Stalworth? I'm sorry, I used Dragon Up, I couldn't really hear you. Yeah, give me a Wits plus Subterfuge. Alright, got you. That is two. Alright. <sighs> really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this might be a problem. Do you want to spend a willpower point on this? Uh, yeah, sure. Alright. So Derek tries to casually break off from you as the cops basically are swarming around you to kick mm -hmm. you back out. Um, he does manage to slip by, Derek, and without being noticed yet, you do manage to get very close to the car uh, that um, that William Shepard and, um, and Carrie are in. Okay, you need to get Carrie out of the car, Derek. It's up to you. It's up to you. Alright, um, well, I'll see if I'll try to get William Shepard's attention. Alright. Yeah, so when you tap on, like, the glass or whatever, he sees you and he does, uh, basically step out of the car. Um, he's like, Derek? Hey, William. Yeah, um, I needed to talk to you. I thought you were dead. Um, and I've been I've been laying low. The uh, the people who came after me, they uh, I've been trying to get some information on them. All right, we I believe that this may be uh, related to the investigation. This incident. Yeah, I, I think so too. There was I actually, and while I was uh, doing some investigation on the people that came after me. I found out they they're after this dude that's uh that's in your uh, in your car right now. Yeah, from what I understand, he was possibly part of their organization before they turned on him. So I'm not sure exactly what to do. Obviously, we can't bring this to the intention of all these cops. They're not, you know, the Gary PD clearly isn't equipped to handle this. Um. But don't worry, we've got plans to take this guy down. Uh, Find out what he knows, Derek. Find out what he knows. Take this guy into FBI custody. So what exactly have you heard about this guy? Uh, nothing so far. He's clearly uh, methed out. Um, so it's going to be a while. We're going to have to sober him up um, back at you know FBI headquarters. But 
you know, once we get him into, you know, federal custody, I think we're going to learn a lot about these guys. Good, good. Well, the reason I came to uh, Con, don't don't let any of the uh, other police know, but I believe that there's a uh, there's a leak in a police organization. I feel like, you know, I was doing some investigation on my own, and I found out that one of the police officers has been leaking information about where you're about to transport this guy. I think they have your car marked. All right. Give me a uh, manipulation plus subterfuge. That is four, and I'll use a will PowerPoint. All right. <laughs> He's like, all right, I appreciate your assistance. Um, and he calls in for basically another, he calls in for another car. He says... I'm going to relocate the guy. Um, I want you to come with us. We need to get you into federal custody as well, where you'll be safe. I am planning on taking everyone out of the city, um, taking them down, you know, to Maryland, where we've got things under yeah, control. Yeah, Monaco. I mean, yeah. we're going to have to go. All right, that sounds good to me. All right. So after a little bit of time, another car comes up. And Shepard does start to move him across the, uh, the uh, carry across the street. All right. So, Ryan, this is your chance to take the shot if you want to. Okay, I'll escape before setting off. Okay. So the shot is going to be uh, dexterity plus firearms plus uh, perception. Ten with specialty. All right. Okay. And what's the damage on the rifle? Do we have that information? Um, the damage is eight. All right. All right. So as um, Carrie is basically crossing the street with uh, Shepard and Derek, um, there's a loud gunshot, and his brains are just splattered all over the concrete. Uh, instantly, uh, basically, Shepard grabs you, Derek, and basically forces you down to the ground, um, starts yelling out, Sniper, and the police start fanning out in all directions. All right, well, this is the time for me to just nonchalantly, um, you know, well, in part of the general panic, of course, yeah. get out of there, because the Sniper... Yeah. Arms over the head, running away. Oh, gunshots. Um, I feel then, like I should do the same. Yeah. yeah. You and, and Jonathan then, are basically right next to each other. Yeah, you can so easily we're, escape. we're heading back. We're panicking on our way back toward the car. Um, the car? Actually, I'm going to my fucking security place. Okay, well, whatever. I'm panicking back. <laughs> this is a good time to show you my new office. It's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the tour. Congrats on the new job, Jonathan. I gotta go. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you next time. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so, um, I'll, I'll hope Derek can, can figure a way out of there. Yeah, Terry is still a little ways away with the car, but you guys are able to easily bunker down in Jonathan's office until he can okay. pull around and get to you. Um, you also notice there's no computer there. <laughs> it's, yeah, there's a ledger like, sheet. You know, I can hook you up with something if you, if you want something, something decent. Um, so, Ryan, you re skate after taking the shot, I presume? Yeah. All right. Yeah, in that case, they start spreading out to look for you, but obfuscated, you're able to escape without any difficulty. So, Derek, you're the one who's in a little bit of a mess. Yeah. So, 
basically, as soon as, like, the gunshot is done, uh, Shepard basically picks you up, leads you into the new car that he arranged, gets you into the back seat, unless you try and resist him. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna try to resist him. Because uh, I'm, I'm he obviously can't protect anybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're better off on your own. Yeah, I'm gonna look at him, but like, this type of protection the police give to people, I'm better off on my own. All right. I'm, uh, gotta struggle to get free. Give me I'm a about. strength plus brawl. Gotcha. That is uh, seven and a specialty. All right. Um, he actually manhandles you into the car, <laughs> slams the door shut and locks it, and then jumps into the driver's seat and pulls out. Well, so, so. Well, damn. Yeah, so as everyone else is, as you're retreating to the office, you see this happen and he pulls out past you. <laughs> well, crap, now we gotta go right through there. So, um, this is not, I mean, he did lock, the, the doors do, like, lock automatically, but this isn't, like, a, a police car that's meant to be holding people, so you can unlock the doors and jump out if you want to. Tuck and roll, like Mannix. Um... Yeah, I'll uh, I'll try to strategically uh, tuck and roll and near near somewhere where I can earth mill. Okay. Uh, and hit, hit the quick corner so no one can see me and I'll earth mill. Okay. So first off, give me a uh, stamina roll. That is tree. Okay. All right, so you take three points of damage as you basically hit the road. Um, you're able to get up, so first give me a strength plus athletics to try and get to the patch of earth you want to use. That is seven. All right. All right, so he brings the car to a halt, tries to stop you, but you're able to get around a corner and uh, you just need to spend a blood point in order to earth meld. Alright, will do. Alright, so you sink into the earth. Alright. Alright, well, we still believe that you are in William Shepard's custody. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, I expect y'all to be good friends and still try to save me. Um, <laughs> Not sure where he's taking you. We're gonna hope for the best. That works too. <laughs> We're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna text you. Obviously. Uh, should I have tried to follow the car from the roofs? Um, uh, you wouldn't have been able to. I mean, there. Yeah. You wouldn't have been able to keep up with him because he's going like sixty miles an hour, and you would have to jump over. Yeah. Actual streets. So, um, so I think we're just, I'm going to, I'm going to text him, obviously, social media, whatever, Derek, get in contact with us whenever you can, give us some sort of clue, what's going on, okay. where you are, you know, obviously coded, because I don't know if his phone's been, <laughs> yeah, if know, he's in custody, if then, if he's in custody, we don't know, oh, God, how am I going to explain this to your parents? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you'll find a way. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully, uh, William Shepard will move on and you can unearth meld and come back to the Haven. I'm hoping that is what happens. So anyway, yes. Yeah, so we give a coded message of, hey, how are you, Derek? Haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> um, All right. And also, as you're uh, just kind of laying low for a little while, you do get another text, a... Uh, like a message on your phone that someone has tried to get in contact with you on Facebook. And who is it? Um, it is uh, it is a store page for Ye Olde Magic Shop. Oh, yeah, know him. Okay. Um, so he asks, you know, he 
It's also kind of coded, but he's basically giving you an advertisement saying to, you know, come around. Oh, I should probably uh, check out that shop. Yeah. The store closes at, you know, midnight, but there is a special offer if you were to come at a specific time well, this yeah, evening. Well, and I have time to go, so I guess we'll uh, load up in the car <laughs> and go to, I gotta get, that's a good buy. That's all I'm saying. It's a good buy. That's a good buy. We'll be there. All right. So... Anyway, you're still with Jonathan when you get this message. Um, so, anyway, um, um, so... I assume because you want me to join him as well. Yeah, I mean, if you don't want to, you don't have to, but... I was going to say, do you want to take a, a, you know, do you want to visit the ye old magic shop again? I suppose I have nothing better to do. <laughs> well, let's... Throw the ledger, like, just away behind him. I, I, it's... <laughs> Uh, nine to five. I mean, until, you know, I got until the computer comes. I've, really I've got to clock out do, sometime. You know. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, try and text Ryan to meet up. Yeah. I guess. So uh, Ryan, you're able after a little while. Probably the first person you're able to find is Terry with the car, not too far away. All right. So if Terry comes. To yeah, the he office, can. He Terry can up. reunite everyone. Okay. So we're all in the car, and then I'll be like, uh, let's go to the ye old magic shop. <laughs> good work, by the way. Good, good job, Ryan. Good all job, right. Jonathan. Very, very well handled. Uh, we've lost Derek, but, you know. <laughs> so just a quick check. What is everyone's humanity ratings? We'll start with Steven. Seven. All right. What is your conscience? He is uh, two. <laughs> I have no conscience. Uh, yeah, you're good. Uh, Ryan? Carrie was a piece of shit, okay? Well, no, you actually do feel guilty. That's, oh, I that's do. That's how I you succeed. Guilty. That's how I succeed. You don't okay. feel. I, okay. No, it was a terrible thing that we did. It was a terrible, <laughs> we were terrible thing. forced by circumstance. I thought it was when I felt guilty I lost. No. You're not feeling guilty. That's... Okay, no, I feel terrible about this. That was just... No, no person should have to win through it all. All right. So, Ryan, your humanity rating? Five. Okay. He doesn't even have a conscience roll at this point, does he? Um, at this point, I would not call for a conscience roll based on this. Yeah. You're a cold-blooded killer. <laughs> well, not yeah. quite, but this is pretty not cold-blooded. It was very necessary. Uh, Jonathan? You might actually get conscience-free. Okay. Um... <laughs> you don't feel as guilty as you maybe you should do, but you feel just enough that you don't degenerate. <laughs> you okay, barely. Thank God. You're like you work it up. You're like I've been to mass a couple of times. I know. Can you imagine if Jonathan was the one who lost the humanity over this? <laughs> it would be pretty funny. And Derek. Well, that would make sense. That would make sense, wouldn't it? I yeah, you you have the highest, so it's the easiest for you to degenerate. Uh, humanity seven, conscience three. Okay. You feel real bad. Like, you're basically tore up about you this. You are in the earth just crying. Just just weeping. But I think this is the first time that you've actually been directly involved in the death of a person, you're so... Like, this is just a horrible, a horrible life that we lead. That we have to this, harm people in this manner. This is my initiation, huh? Yeah. All life is sacred, you know? Tough, tough. Alright. But All right. no one degenerates. No one degenerates, alright. All right, so you guys... Bone? Earth metal with him? Like all of his, all of his gear things, welded all with, him. with him. I mean, he can't pick up any text messages. Like, no, it, it's, it's kind of in a... It's in molecule form, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Interesting. But it will be there when he gets out. All right. So, yeah, That's every time... Busy signal. Every time you unearth meld, like, all of your phone messages, like, pop up at once. Speak, speak, delete, delete. Oh, it's going off crazy. All right. All right. Well, we're headed off to the old magic shop. Hope for the best, Derek. I shall. All right. So yeah, you guys head to Chicago. You head to the magic shop, and when you arrive, it's pretty much the same as you left it before. Um, and Dent sees you guys, and he waves you in. Uh, the shop is closed, mm -hmm. but he brings you into the back. Well, I have a coupon. And you notice that uh, a Groupon. <laughs> and you notice that. <laughs> Uh, the old man that was with Houdini uh, is also present. Gibson, Gibson is his name. The Gibson guy. All right. So, Dent sits you guys down and says, um, 
I should probably... I wanted to call you here so I can explain that you guys are probably in danger. Oh, you think? <laughs> are you, do you mouth off to the old wizard? No, I don't. But I'm, I give him the look that says, oh, Ryan you think? Knows. So... <laughs> All right. So you're sitting now, he's like, so the... You interfered with an attack on my friend Gibson. Who is Gibson? He is a wizard, the same as myself and yourself. Uh, and the man who first attacked you in the Succubus Club, uh, I don't believe that Etheridge had time to inform you, but uh, his name is Orloff. Orloff. He was formerly uh, Gibson's apprentice in the Hermetic Arts. However, uh, he is since... Um, he felt that his master put too many restrictions upon him, and there is an old feud between them. Since he saw you helping, you should be aware that Orloff will likely target you as well. All right, and then who are the Anarchs? I mean, they were also after Houdini. And are they after Gibson, or were they just after Houdini? I don't know anything about any Anarchs. I don't even know what that is. So presumably it had something to do with Ehrich himself. Okay. All right. So until further notice, Gibson, Ehrich had to leave the city, obviously. Um, until further notice, Gibson will be staying with me. Um, and I have certain wards in place which will keep us safe here. But if Gibson is out of reach, then Orloff may turn his attention on to you. So you should be aware he is skilled at manipulating minds as well as other powers. That's what I need. I need a mage after me as well as a hunter. That's what I need. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, so we got this Orloff guy after me too. And what's this? Uh, what's this mage's name? What's your Dent? Name? Dent. Dent owns the magic shop. And he says, "Of course, if you need any, uh, you know, <laughs> that's what I have there. <laughs> if you need any, uh, like hermetic texts or anything like that, obviously, most of this stuff in the front room is." more mundane. I would love to take a look at your hermetic text. But I do have a private collection you can look through. Um, that would be very agreeable to me. Alright. So you can put down a uh, dent as an ally. Ally. And I can use his library. Fabulous. Yay. Um, okay. So, thank you for the warning. Magi Dent. Mag, 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 magus, magus Dent. Um, how do they wish to be addressed? I have no idea. Um, Dent is fine. Okay. Alright, well, thank you very much for the warning, and, um... I want to stay on the lookout for you. Alright. So, it's around this time. It takes about, you know, a half hour to drive to Chicago. About part way back. It's been like 45 minutes. And finally, it seems like the coast is clear, Derek. And you can come up out of the earth. Alright, cool. I'll uh, come up, check my phone, let everyone know I'm alright. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Sends an MMS to everybody. I'm okay. Then get a text message back. By the way, there's an evil wizard after us, too. By the too. way, <laughs> um, not only is the hunter after us, but yes, we do have an evil wizard after us. Be on the lookout. You uh, weren't there when you... You weren't, a real wizard? You, you weren't there when you gave up your boom, your life boom to Logan and then had the evil wizards attack us. You weren't actually, that was our last session. Yeah, so last session, um, we already kind of talked about it in your interlude, but Inyanga's deal to have you use your life boon uh, basically went into effect without you there. 
So what what do we have to give up for the life boon? Um, so basically, you had a life boon from when you guys saved uh, the Prince of Chicago early on. Um, and then uh, as part of the deal you made to get the ritual cast on you to try and protect you from the entity, uh, you agreed to uh, ask the Prince of Chicago to form an alliance with the Prince of Milwaukee against the Lupines. And I'm, I've already done that, right? Yeah, basically it happened off screen. You weren't there for the session, and basically you already agreed to do it, so... Yeah, so you, it just you went did into that, effect. and then also during that session, we fought evil wizards. And now did the evil not? wizards are after us again. Okay, okay, got you. All right, so you guys are all able to meet up. You find the patch of earth Derek was in. We'll pick you up on our way home. All right. So we've got a hunter after us, and we've got an evil wizard after us. Yes, it seems that way. Okay. So much for laying low. And also, you get a uh, another message. Carrie's dead. You get another message um, from uh, LeBron. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's out of drugs. His guys, well, he is out of drugs. His guys have also found a location um, that the gang that's been hitting them is using as a base. Mm. He asks you, basically, he's like, apparently the cops are busy on some sort of manhunt, like halfway across the city. So this is basically the best time to go in and hit them. All right, do, do you have enough manpower, enough gunpower? Um, he's got his guys, but he suggests that you bring your guys as well. All right, well, Terry, turn the car around, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so protect my, my hood. All right. I love the idea of this old British guy. Teaming up. So, yeah, and everyone is basically already in the car, so everyone's getting dragged along with you. Yep, everyone's going to come with us. Everybody got your gun? Ryan, you got the sniper rifle, I know that. I got my Webley. Derek doesn't have a gun. He's got claws. He's got claws. Jonathan have a gun? Jonathan, yeah, he has a gun. Right. I, I didn't bring it. Well, why not? And you don't always keep that gun on I you. went to a business meeting. Okay. That's a good point. I figured this would be the worst possible time to make the wrong impression by bringing a firearm. That's a good point. All right, you can do have you the sniper rifle. A, do you not have a holster that you can conceal it under your jacket? I'm not going to conceal a weapon when I go talk to Modius. Here, and have a sniper I rifle. I wear my Webley when I talk to Modius. <laughs> it does you actually make sense to not bring the gun with him. Especially because I think... Do we have time to stop off so we can pick up his gun? Um, he yeah, can have the sniper rifle. Can he shoot a sniper rifle? Why doesn't, not? It require, like, doesn't it require strength for or something? Um, no, that's to fire it. If you get into a prone position, you can use it from a distance. <laughs> then we get into a prone position in this fucking gang war. <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to climb up onto a rooftop. Um, I will say, since Ryan said he was getting fully heated before going to meet with Carrie in the first place, you do have both your Desert Eagle and your Sawn-Off shotgun in addition to uh, the, the sniper shotgun? rifle. That doesn't take any oh, like one of those. All right. Just remember, I do also have my best weapons, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You are a frightening, frighteningly handsome man. I have my best power. Have you noticed how hot I am? Well, that scary is hot. Have you know He's scary hot. Have you noticed how scary I am? Yeah, how scary hot you are. It's just, it's weird. It's, it's have you weird noticed how weird. out of my league, out of and your you league wonder, I am? And you wonder why Alicia's jumping into the shower. <laughs> I mean, wait. Just look at me like, oh no, I'm afraid I might be gay now. <laughs> you could never get a date with me because I'm more attractive than you are. Yeah. No. Terrible. <laughs> Okay, so will I give you the sawed-off shotgun? Uh, I'll take it just for safety measures, but I won't actually use it. Alright. Okay. So, you guys, let me find my description of this place. I figured we would get it to this way earlier. That, uh, that police thing went way that out of control. Took way, that took way longer. Alright. 
So, the base itself seems to be a warehouse, which is in the burnt-down section of the city, although the warehouse itself is only partially burnt. It didn't get totally destroyed. Okay. So, uh, LeBron meets you up a little, a few blocks away, and he's brought a couple of his guys with him. Um, so, LeBron knows that there's something up with you. He's not necessarily mm-hmm. thinking vampire, but... He right. knows there's something weird. I could be a wizard. Who knows? <laughs> um, right. So his guys don't, but he basically takes you aside. He's like, so this is the place. Um, if you and your guys want to... He sees this odd assortment of people. He's like, if your specialists want to do anything beforehand, you know, go for it. I will set up my guys. Once the shooting starts, we're going to just basically go in guns blazing. All right. So I will off specs first of all. Okay. And see what we're up against. How many people, where they are, what they are. Okay. Give me a couple of rolls. Give me first a dexterity plus stealth to stay unobserved as you move around the perimeter. Uh, dexterity plus stealth? Yep. That was, that's a whopping two. All right. Can I... Save it in case I can be weaker in the fight. Okay. I'm just going to levitate around so I will at least be silent. Yeah. All right. And then give me a perception plus empathy. Uh, that is a four. All right. So you spot a number of auras inside. Um... So it seems like there, you can see what looks to be the outline of like an aura on the roof. Um, you can see several auras on like the main floor, um, just in the general area on the first floor of the warehouse. Um, there's just like, you can't really distinguish one from another, but you can tell there is, is a number of people in there. Okay. Um, there is someone on the roof. There might be more people further inside on the upper floors, but you can't really make it out distinctly. Um, there are, let's see, three people standing right outside the main entrance, and they do notice you as you're sneaking around, and they basically warn you off. Like, just get the hell out of here. I'm just an old man. I'm get out sorry. of here. Awesome. All right. All right. So, Jonathan, what do you, what, what, what do you see? I'll, I'll have a check. I'll check on my aspects. Well, let's have a quick look-see then. All right. So you give me a dexterity plus stealth. <laughs> the old man walks oh. around, and the handsome, scary guy walks around. Could I not just use aspects? Um, you can, Apparently but you have to get you have to get close enough to the building, like it's to look around. So. All right, it's a free. I'll try. That's better than Stevens. Yeah, it's better than me. I am not a stealthy man. All right. And then do you have aura perception? Not aura perception, though. No. All right, then just give me a perception plus alertness. Oh, I thought you had aura perception. Five. No, I don't. I only have level one. And I'm only staying at level one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I thought you had level two. Then never mind. I really didn't need You to. can get level two if you want it. He has it. I do. I <laughs> he just used two. it. I just used it, well, and I wanted to check myself, but apparently... So you can hear, um, there does seem to definitely be someone up on the roof. Um, and you can hear many voices coming from inside. Right, I'll relay that to Stephen. Alright, well, you weren't as helpful as I thought you'd be. Alright. Alright, so we gotta take out the guy on the roof. Mm-hmm. Because he's probably, I don't know, a lookout, a sniper, who knows. Um, although I suppose if we were inside the building. Is there another way into the building? Um, you... Is there a back entrance? Is there a window? Yeah, so Jonathan spotted that there is a black a back entrance by the loading dock. Is there anybody there? Is it guarded? Um, you didn't see any auras there, and he didn't see anyone either. All right, so maybe we send... Uh, Ryan sneaking around to see if there's any booby traps. You can do that. Just so we're clear here, what's the plan? Well, I don't know. I'm forming a plan. 
if we go in the back and there's no booby traps, which there probably are, but if Ryan no, I mean, what, them, what do you plan on doing with these people? Well, they're a rival gang. We're going to have to take them out. <laughs> right. I really don't want a part of that. All right. Well, you stay back by the car and, and just keep it safe. Right. All right. That I can handle. So anyway, Brian, why don't you check out that back entrance? Okay. All right. Are you obfuscating? Yeah. All right. So it seems like the back door is locked. It requires a dexterity plus security roll to get through it. Is there any booby traps? Do you want me to unlock it? Um, yeah, if you want to. Okay. Dex plus security. Yes. What was that? Six. All right. All right. So it takes you a while to wrestle with it, but eventually you do get it open. So, um, yeah. So yeah, the door opens, and you're in sort of a a back area of a warehouse. And now with the door open, you can definitely hear voices coming from further inside. All right, LeBron. Right. Sure, this is the rival gang. He's pretty sure, yeah. Well, then I guess we uh, head on in. Do you all want to go in, or do you want... I don't know, how do you want to handle this? I feel as the leader of the group, I should probably go in with LeBron. I will let the others decide whether or not they want to uh, enter the game. Do you want to scout out further or do you want well, to well and i'm just gonna say ryan's pretty good at sneaking right he can scout out further yeah, I don't mind saying. can i hear with aspects what they're saying um well you would have to get back close to the building again and they're like on the lookout for you but uh, if i go around the back can i go around the back um like they yeah. kind of they spotted you already. okay so ryan go in and listen to what they're saying yeah sure i'll i'll snoop around with my phone on record okay so, uh, first off, give me a perception plus security roll. Seven. Okay. That could be a bit far away. Um, yeah, that would apply. Okay. So as uh, you're walking through, you do notice that there do seem to be uh, security cameras set up inside this place. Um, so it is going to take a uh, wits plus stealth roll in order to try and get past them unseen. Six. Okay. All right. So yeah, you get into the main uh, floor of the building. And uh, once you get closer, you can see that it is like a big meth lab. And so there are some gangbangers walking around as like guards, but it looks like some of the people are kind of like civilian workers. They look like drug addicts, um, but they're not armed or anything. They seem to be just working there. Okay. There are also stairs that can lead you upwards. Uh, to the upper floors, and there looks to be a door which leads down into some kind of basement. Um, the door into the basement is right in the middle of everything, so there's no way to open it without being noticed. Um, but you could get up the stairs. All right, Mary, what do you think? Keep going ahead? Um, yeah, keep checking it out. All right, I'll head upstairs. All right. So, uh, if you head into the upper floors, you can see that there are offices, probably for managers or something like that. 
Um, there seems to be one room which is turned into some sort of security room. You can see the feeds for all the security footage inside, and there is a gangbanger sitting in front of the monitors watching them. Um, and then in addition to that, there is also a, a room which is marked with a piece of tape and it reads Armory, um, which is locked. Um, you can see that there is... You could try and get past it, but there is a security camera pointed right at it, so unless you disable the security cameras, there's no way to open it without being noticed. So what are we trying to do here? So this is a rival gang that is attacking LeBron and his crew as they try to deal drugs. Because they're obviously a rival So would so what's the plot, like, would this be a successful mission if we just stole their weapons? So it would be a successful mission if we destroyed their lab. Destroy their lab? Yeah. Okay. So, so if this is army, a meth lab, so if we can just blow it up, then they're going to have to uh, relocate. We, we don't necessarily need loss of life. Okay. Okay, so um, is the guy looking at the computer screens on his own in that room? Yes, he is. All right, can I get in there? Uh, yeah. So, uh, is it is there a door? Um, yeah, there is a door, but it's left ajar. All right, so as long as I don't make noise opening the door, it wouldn't break obfuscate. No, your obfuscate is fine. You can just slip in. All right, I uh, use the, my uh, staff to kind of place in front of his neck and then pull back and choke him. Choke him out? All right. Yeah. Give me a strength plus melee. Uh, seven with a specialty. Okay. So you basically choked him off. He's trying to call for help, but he can't really do that. Um, and he's trying to struggle against you. But he's not making too much progress, and eventually you do manage to basically choke him out. He loses consciousness. All right, I'll stop there. I'll get some blue points off him. All right, how much you want to take? Just two. Okay. Okay. You notice he does oh, have, right. also, there is an Uzi sitting on the table right next, basically within hand's reach. He was trying to reach for it, but you pulled him back. All right. Uh, can I talk that onto my coat? Yep. Alright, I'll drop that. Let's see. Uh, hmm. Was I only able to see him from the corridor because the door was ajar? Um, yeah, you were able to look inside because the door was open, and you can see, like, there is no lighting here except for the monitors, which were kind of framing him. Alright, so there's not, like, a window to see him. No, there's nothing like that. Okay. Uh, can I search him for a key to this room? Uh, yeah. So this room um, does not have a lock on it. However, you do find a key to something. Possibly the armory. Okay. Is there uh, somewhere I could store his body out of sight? Um, basically, from what you can tell, it doesn't look like anyone really comes into this room, so... Except when the shifts change, you know, there's no way to know when that happens, but... This seems about as out of the way as it gets. Okay, well, I'll just put him against the wall so you don't see him as soon as you come in. 
Okay. I'll close the door. Okay. All right. So uh, I'll just get in again. All right. Try the armory door. All right. Do you want to like unplug the camera there before you do that? Close. All right. Can I turn off the cameras actually from that room? Yes, you can. Yeah. All right, I should do that. All right. So the key does fit into the armory door, and it does swing open. So That's inside, nice. you find a number of things. There is a set of light ballistic armor, uh, a set of brass knuckles, and then leaning up against the wall, there is a Remington uh, shotgun, a Colt M16, and a uh, MP5 submachine gun along with five wooden stakes and a small duffel bag uh, filled with cash. Interesting. Okay. What do I do about this, guys? Do I try to carry it out of the place, or what? Well, anything you're carrying with you is obfuscated, right? Yes. So stuff as much as you can into the duffel bag. Okay. And carry that out. Are there any, there's no grenades or anything in there that I can use to blow up this lab. Um, I'm gonna no. I'm going to assume down in the basement are the vampires that are running this place. Probably. Um, well, we're just going to try and blow up the lab for now. Okay. I know how to blow up a meth lab, correct? Being um, yeah, you could do that. Person. So if I could just get in there, I could mix the two chemicals together to blow it up. Yep. Um, okay. It would be a lot more difficult, but you could also try and impart the knowledge to Ryan, and he could try and do it himself as well. Um, that would obviously just increase more difficulty. There would be more dice rolls involved, but um, it is possible. It is possible to do that. Um, so, how difficult would it be to get into the lab now that the security guy is, there's, I mean, I don't even know. With, I mean, the lab is filled with workers right now, so for you to get in with, without being seen would be basically impossible. Okay. Alright. Hmm. I got this. You got this? Can you come back out and I can impart you the knowledge? Yeah, so I'll give you, I'll leave everything with you guys except the money. Okay. You are welcome to the money. Um, well, half of the money. <laughs> he's got a woman now. I know he's only getting half the money. Um, so, okay, so I will attempt to impart him the knowledge. All right. So, uh, first off, give me a... Um, All right, so the knowledge, the skill is actually intelligence plus science, but you have to also explain it to him. So mm -hmm. it is limited by your manipulation plus leadership, which I think is probably lower. No, that's intelligence plus science. Right. Well, okay. It's well, intelligence well. plus science and manipulation plus leadership, whichever is the lower of the two. Okay, it's seven. All right. Instead of eight, so the specialty is seven with no specialty. Okay. All right, so you explain in a way that Ryan seems to understand what he needs not to do. It's not that hard to blow up a meth lab. If you mess up, you blow it up, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to... <laughs> so if it's not working, just start breaking things. Yeah, just start breaking things. That's my, that's my, um, that's my uh, advice to you. So he seems to understand that, so I send him in off he skated. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So first off, uh, Ryan, give me a uh, dexterity plus stealth. You are obfuscated, but in order to do things while obfuscated, you need to try and avoid notice. Six. All right. So you're able to get up there. 
and you start uh, messing around with things, and you set off what seems to be a, a chain reaction. Um, like, smoke starts pouring out. Things aren't looking good. Uh, unfortunately, you are noticed at the very end. So, gangbangers look at you, they start pulling out weapons, uh, all of the workers freak out because they know it's about to explode, and they start running. So, okay, spend the uh, blue points on celerity and just run away. All right. So you start booking it. Uh, they basically open fire on you. So give me uh, your bullet soak. Did you find out about the combat helmets? Um, they're aiming at your body, so it doesn't matter right now. Six. All right. All right. All right. So you take three points of damage. Uh, as basically these guys spray automatic fire at you and you celerity run out of there. Okay. So you guys basically just start hearing gunfire from inside. You see Ryan just sprinting the fuck out of there. And then just a moment later there's like an explosion and there's like a fire starting. Smoke is pouring out. Alright, probably time to leave. <laughs> so um, basically... Uh, yeah, LeBron, he seems impressed, mm -hmm. and he gets his guys in his car, and he yeah. drives off. We'll, we'll, we'll take off. I think this is done. Alright. So yeah, you guys are able to retreat out of the warehouse. No problem. And, Easy. yeah, you're able to divvy out the, uh, the loot as you guys see fit. Uh, Terry does request the, uh, the M16. He plans on, you know, customizing it with a scope and maybe like, electric percussion and a push-button sight, you know, just something like that. Yeah, no, he's, he's welcome. So, I suppose Brian feels a bit bad for uh, getting everyone involved in this mess with Kerry. <laughs> so, he's willing to share the money evenly with everyone. Wow. Wow! Lucy's, like, making a inroads there, making you more human. So let's see, we've got basically five people once we count Lucy in the middle. Since it's $10,000 in cash, that means everyone gets $2,000. All right. So I get $1,000. <laughs> no, Lucy was involved. She takes her $2,000 cut. So she's cut. got a couple thousand dollars. So oh, okay. I thought what you would do is spread it out evenly amongst everyone and then split mine in half. <laughs> nah, <laughs> because it's $10,000, five ways just splits way easier. Yeah. Grabs. Um, so this is the only two thousand dollars Derek has since he has no resources. <laughs> so yeah. definitely put that down on your character sheet. Will do. All right, and that is pretty much it for the night. Um, so everyone spends a blood point to wake up the next day, and we will deal. This is pretty much the end of the session, but we need to deal with Derek's parental situation. Hi. So, uh, yeah, they, um, they send you a return message. Um, they do seem obviously concerned about all this. Um, you know, they ask if, basically, if you want to come back home with them, you know, to New York. Um... Well, I'll tell him that uh, 
I told him that I can't do that, you know. I've uh, matured as a man, and you know, a man can't come back and live with his parents. That's just uh, yeah. unacceptable. A man, what a man has to do is live with his homosexual older man that pays for everything for him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is this their class that we're yeah. talking about? Okay. But he's got a little spreading around money now. Yeah, he's got $2,000. You know, he can, he, can, he can show his parents a good time while they're here. So, um, yeah, they if are... If he ever sees them. Yeah, so basically... Plans are kind of put off the time. They are still coming by. They won't be by, obviously, for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so you're able to keep kind of plans nebulous at this point with nothing directly happening in the daytime yet. Okay. But this will be an ongoing problem. Well, well uh, when, they, when they get here, I'll, uh, I'll try to find some like fancy place in Chicago that's like only open for at night time <laughs> to take them out to dinner. You can take so them to the second like club. Excuse. Introduce them to Stephen and just have him dominate them to make them think that they had a wonderful time. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just, I'll replace their memories. It'll be fine. All right. So um, that's pretty much it. Uh. Jonathan, you are able to order, like, get your laptop and everything. Um, the first major problem you encounter is that all of the files are on written records, so your first several nights are going to be just straight data entry. Yeah, I figured everything. as much. I was yeah. going to wonder if I could get someone to do, like, temp work on it and I could just can supervise I write it. write him a program where he can scan it in and it'll be, like, converted? Um, yeah, I guess you could do that. Give me an intelligence plus computers roll, and then if that doesn't work, we'll deal with the temp situation. Okay, so uh, so that's seven with the specialty. Yeah, so you can definitely hire a temp if you want to, although Steven's program would also work just fine as well. Let's go to the program then. All right. So yeah, you basically gotten that started, and when we pick up the next night, you'll have finished data entry, and you can start with the actual work. All right, then. So, that's going to be pretty much it for this session, I think. Um, let's start with uh, what did everyone learn. So, let's, let's begin with Ryan. Uh, I don't know. It's surprisingly hard to knock a mental unconscious. <laughs> All right. That is true. That is true. So uh, let's do Stephen. Um, I learned the name of the maid, the evil wizard that is after us, which is Orloff. All right. Uh, Derek? I learned that I cannot earth meld multiple people. Okay. And uh, Miles? I learned that you can transfer boons. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't because you don't have any children to transfer them onto yourself from. But other people. Can. But a general, you could. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see. Who was it that? One last night it was Miles that won yeah, the award. So, uh, Jonathan, why don't you give out? Your vote for role-playing award? Well, there's four of us now. Yes, there is. So we're going to actually okay. vote for it. And if anyone in chat, I, think, I, think that's, I saw Kulik was Steve. there, if he wants to give his thoughts. I'd say Stephen, I think. Okay. Stephen, who are you voting for? Hmm. See, I don't know that Ryan actually acted more cavian during this one, so I don't know that I can vote for him. Because I really think you should have gone in and just <laughs> torched the evidence room, honestly. Um, hmm. I voted for Miles last time, so... Well, and he won last time, yeah, so... Yeah, I was going to say, so I can't vote for him again. So I'm going to have to go with Derek. All right. Derek, who are you voting for? I'll, uh, I'll say Stephen. Okay. And Ryan? Derek. All right. Um, so we're in kind of a tie-splitting situation, so I'm going to give it to uh, Derek this time for his performance 
uh, trying to talk with William Shepard yeah. and with his parents. Yeah. And that whole thing. Coming up, yeah. Coming up with the yeah, you know, pretty good excuses. Yeah. All right. So uh, Derek gets four experience points. Everyone else gets three. Um, since you've been missing some sessions, Stallworth, I'm going to give you one extra experience point to bring up the five so that you don't fall too much behind the level curve. Did we get the spend? Right, cool. Um, not yet. So, um, David, would you teach me obfuscate if I asked? Certainly not. If I ordered you to teach me obfuscate? <laughs> I prefer to ask him. <laughs> if I if I asked Lucy and she told you to teach me obfuscate, <laughs> if it became part of your terms of employment, I don't feel like I'm getting anything out of this. <laughs> you have my my you have room and board and and a place for your. Woman He's worried like... because he can see that once you have obfuscate, his contributions to the team <laughs> suddenly no, aren't has, like, worth. Well, I'm only going to have obfuscate while I can stand yeah. there. Okay? I can stand and obfuscate, please. I'm not going to be any threat. <laughs> like any worker, he needs to keep his skills valuable <laughs> for his employer. You, you, can't, can't, you can't use obfuscate until you've joined the union. <laughs> so, I'm just I'm throwing it out there. I've got enough now for obfuscate. Yeah, I'll teach you whatever. All right. I would teach, I'd love to, if we can figure out a way for me to teach you guys thaumaturgy without us all being killed. You're allowed to teach him dominate. I'll, I'll, I've got a way for you to pay me back. You Besides, can make me some, uh, you can make me some poison, some poisoned blood, some chloroform, and some C4. Oh, okay, yeah, I can do that. All right. He's peasy. So that's pretty much the end of the session. I'm going to end the stream here, and I'm going to end the uh, episode here. So thanks for joining us, and hopefully we'll see you next week. See ya.